this, I think, quickly together. Uh, how do we graph, graph this function? I x and y. OK, you want to explain that a little more? x and y thing. Do that whole x and y thing. What thing? OK, put an x. OK. I'll walk through it. Put an x and walk through it. OK, right? So what x will we choose? OK, then, yeah, the left side will be x. So what x will we choose? Any number we want? Zero. I love zero. Why do I love zero? Because it's easy. Zero. So easy. easy. Because when I plug a number in for x, the, the zero in for x, anything that's multiplied by x goes away. Exactly. So what do we get out for y in this case? Three. I mean, that's so easy. I don't even really need to write it down. We graph it. The whole point is to graph it. We don't have to write down zero comma three, right? I know that if I plug in zero, I get out three. three. Zero get out three. Okay. Um, now what? All right. Well, you could do one. We could do what? Anybody find a better? Three. Uh, you three. can do three. Three. I like three. Why do I like three? Because it can cancel out. It cancels out the three. What happens when I cancel the three with the three? It just it cancels out. They can't use that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, then it would just go to two over one. Yes, two over one. It would just go to two. Plus three. Two plus three is one. Perfect. Right? I love it when the fractions can be, you know, eliminated somehow if that's possible. In this case, it's possible. We plug in a three, we get out a five. That's like what my door. Pencil in that jar up there. I got it. Okay, he's gone. He's got you. Is this enough? Do we need any more points? Do we need any more points? No. Why not? Because you can just um, you can do a hole down. Oh, down, long weekend. Down, well, long weekend. Down three over five. No, not no. Let's look at the let's look at the let's look at the pattern between these two points. Up how many? Two. Two up. Over three. Over three. Look okay, at that. That's up that many and right that many and up two over three. Okay. So I can just keep going up two and over three and find another point. Yep. How do we know that? How do we know that we can go up two and over three and up two and over three and just keep finding point after point after point after point? Because um, the the because there's an infinite number of points. But why do we know those infinite number of points are on that like fit that pattern? Not all graphs do that. How do we know this graph does? It is linear. It's just line, but I want to see what the slope is. It has a slope. This is the slope. Yeah, because we know any function that looks like looks like what? Mx plus b. Mx plus b. It's going to be linear. Okay. What's not linear? Here's an example of something that's not linear. X squared plus two x minus four. Not linear because it has this x squared. Right. If I cover up that x squared, I get rid of it by magic somehow. Two x plus four, or two, sorry, two x minus four. That's linear. It is linear, mx plus b. Okay. You answer me this, is this linear? No. Why not? No, it's the same y equals no. So is that linear or not? No. That's just telling us what y is. Uh, well, y changes when x changes, right? If I plug in a different x, I get a different y. Yes. Well, it is linear. It's yeah. Does it look like that? I will help there's no slope. There's this no, would be the slope. Right. There's no y energy. Uh, almost every graph's going to have y. There's a few that don't. Most of these that one starts at zero. It yeah. starts at zero, so we could just say plus zero. We got ourselves a b. Now does it look like y equals mx plus b? No. Yes. Yeah, it, it, yes, it does. So it is linear. It looks like y equals mx plus b, even if b is zero. I don't have to write plus zero. If it, is plus zero, then that's b, and that's linear. Okay, not linear. Yes, linear. 
Okay, how about this? Two over x plus five. How about that? that m times x? This is more like m divided by x. This is a crazy thing. Like, there's, there's places where this graph doesn't even exist. Actually, there's one place where this graph doesn't exist. Anybody want to venture a guess where this graph doesn't exist? The graph comes directly from this function. When would this, when would this function be like? No, no, not possible. Can't do that. It must have something to do with x, right? When x is zero. When x is zero, because why? You can't divide. Not even zero. So is this thing, like this graph would not have any points at x is zero. When x is zero, there's no points there. So yeah, it does some weird things. So we don't even have to worry about that right now because we're just worried about linear functions. Does not compute. Does not compute. Okay. Your functions look like y equals mx plus b. We make our lives easy if we plug in and whatever the, the denominator. The denominator. Or any, not just what the denominator is, but anything that the denominator could divide. Could divide. Anything that is a multiple. So multiple. That's the word. Three, six, nine, twelve, negative three, negative six, negative five, negative twelve, negative thirty, negative ninety-nine. Thank you. If you had like just use zero every time for like something like that, yeah. Then could we just from that then just go up three nine and like go up three? Yeah. 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 That's that what this. That's what math is about. It's noticing yeah. patterns. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we notice the pattern. The pattern is, look, th like this number will always be what I get when I plug zero in, right? So I could like after I do it ten times, I'm not even gonna plug in zero. I'm just gonna say. Whatever, I plug in zero, I'm just going to get this. So I know there's a point at zero, well, at zero comma what for this function? B. B, right? Because B is just a, in, the, in that equation, it's just a variable. So always zero comma whatever that number is. B. Right? And then we just follow the slope from there. Okay? We've noticed this pattern of it goes up this many and over that many. Up that many and to the right that many. And that still holds up one of those at negative. If it's negative two thirds, we could go up negative two, which actually would be going down. down up negative two, going down, and then it's out of the three, four, right? Three. Uh, we could do this. We could go up this many and right this many. So can you just have one point and automatically you know? For these kinds of functions, yeah, they're linear functions. We know that if it looks like y equals mx plus b, it's going to be a line, which means we just need to find a point, and then it follows the slope. Good. Really, we just need any point. The easiest point. Would be that one, right? Yeah, this is the false negative. Like if it was negative negative two uh -huh. over negative three, then you would just go down down two and to the left three. Look at that. Look where that puts us. Down two and to the left three. Excuse me. There. But what if I started here, went up two and over three? Then you just it's go to that point. Right. Yeah. It's the same. Up two over three. Right. Up two. I should be more specific. To the right three. Or down two into the left three, it's all in the same line. Yes. And of course, I don't need that third point. I know it's going to be a line. Why do I know it's going to be a line? Just by looking at it. Not the graph, but the equation. Because it looks like y equals m. Exactly. Y equals mx plus b. I know that's going to be a line. So once I have two points, I have enough for the line. The line that I draw through these two points will also go through that third point that we just happened to find. Let me erase this so we don't get confused. This has nothing to do. This line is just an example of another linear function. Okay. Good. I learned about something over the weekend so every year. Do you know why, why there was no school? Because we go to the teacher's conference. There's a state teacher conference, there's no school at any school, except maybe private schools. Uh, all over the state, we were all, this year, we were in Billings, and we all learned from other teachers, they told us about stuff. So I learned about this really cool thing, and we're gonna give it a try, okay? Because I think it's, it's helpful, I think it's cool and fun. So to do that, I want everyone of you to grab a computer from the back, there's a stack there, grab one, okay? Everybody, all five of you, okay? Cool. Now, Something like, uh, 
<laughs> I saw a question like this. There's a short line, it's a long line. Um, what do you think about that question? I think that's a good question. Because that's my question. I'm going to ask, <laughs> answer it like a mathematician. Yeah. What, does it not make sense? What do you think? Because they go in both directions, so it can't be short. So if I was asked if it was short, is it going to answer like a mathematician? I would say what? <laughs> well, is it short? Well, no, like if it's a long against all the long ones. Right, but we're getting at the like particulars, the math of it. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to close this session if we can't pay attention. I'll let you pick it back up in a minute if you can all put your eyes up here. If I if you were to ask a mathematician, is it a short line? What would a mathematician say about it being long or short? Is it long? No. Lines are infinite. They're infinite. Is they're infinite? Is that long? Yes, it's long. It's about as long as it can be, right? So if you ask me if it's a long line, I'd say yeah. If I say it's a short line, I'd say no. And it wouldn't have anything to do with whether or not whether or not it's a long or a short line. It doesn't have anything to do with like if I can only see a little bit of it in this window, right? Because that's not how long the line is. How long is the line? It's infinitely long. Infinitely long. Okay. So it's not to pick on anybody. It's just to to point something out because it really helps us get at some vocabulary here, okay? How about, uh, I saw something like, up and to the uh, right, I think I saw right. Does it go up and to the right? You think there's more exact mathematical language for that? No. No? Yeah. Well, what are we talking about, up and to the right? And along with this, maybe, is uh, is it, Diagonal. Okay, saw that a couple times. Okay. Um, what's more specific? Being diagonal or going up and to the right? What's more specific? Diagonal is more specific than up and to the right? I need to get rid of all the diagonals. That would mean it's more general. Well, then to the right. Diagonal ones that you can choose. Are there, up, are there ones that are diagonal that are not up and to the right? So this is more specific, and this is more general. Diagonal captures all the ones that go up and to the right, and what's the other choice? Up and to the left. Up and to the, up and to the right. Up and to the left. Oh, up and to the left. Okay. Down and to the left. <laughs> down and to the left would be the same as up and to the right. Exactly. Okay. So up and to the right, down and to the right. Okay. Or up and to the left. Same thing. Um, so is this diagonal? Why not? Oh, is it? Yeah. No, it's straight. What's What's diagonal going mean? Diagonal angle. What's what does it mean to be diagonal? Uh, um, not straight up and down. Not straight up and down. Or not uh, side to side, side. And not side to side. side. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what we're getting at here, we kind of talked about the short line and how lines are infinite, but all of this stuff. What part of the line, what attribute, do you know what the word attribute means? Sure. Sure or yes or no? No. No, okay, an attribute. Like, uh, one of the attributes of this board is that it is white. Okay. Another attribute is that it uh, you know, has dimensions. I could measure the dimensions, that would be another attribute. It's uh, kind of shiny, that's another attribute. Right? It's things that I would use to describe the board. Okay. So. We're just, in all of these, we're describing the same attribute of this line. It's diagonal or non-diagonalness. It's steepness. It's depth. What's that? Depth. Depth. It doesn't really have a depth. It only has two dimensions, a, a, a height and a width. Does anybody know the word that describes the steepness of each of these things? Also, a word that starts with S. The word that we mentioned already. Size. Well, size is a little bit trickier. Well, they're all infinitely uh, in size, right? Okay. okay. Let's play a little hangman. Figure out what's that? Oh, you win. Slow. Right? Okay. Singing like the whole time. Or whatever. 
Or maybe super quietly. <laughs> well, like, uh, like, every time I say linear, I just keep saying slope. Like, go like that, and that's why I keep thinking. Slope. Now, lines naturally have a slope, right? Slope. How steep is it? What is the slope? Okay. Other things that don't so naturally have a slope are things that are not linear, right? So now we could talk about the slope of this thing, but then we'd be in calculus. So let's not. Not right now, anyway. Okay. So all of these have a slope, right? These have a certain kind of slope, right? What kind of slope would you say those have? Diagonal slope. I love it. Diagonal slope. Okay. And even among the diagonals, there's two different kinds of diagonals, would you say? Positive and negative diagonals. Okay, this is, which of these is a positive or a negative slope? Up and to the right one is positive. This is a positive slope. Okay, and this one? A negative. A negative slope. I'm going to end this session. <laughs> So this slope. Here's a positive slope. Why? Because we go up and to the right. right? If I go up, let's say this is 2 and this is 3, the slope is 2 thirds. Positive number. Up 2, to the right 3. Even if I go down 2 and to the left 3, and that's down 2 to the left 3, I've got a negative divided by a negative. What's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. positive. So that's the same as a positive 2 thirds slope. This one, let's say that we go down three and to the right five. We have down three and to the right five. It's a negative number. Negative divided by positive is a negative. I could also do, let's see, I guess it depends on how I look at this. But if I go up three and to the left five, up three and to the left five, I could go also down three to the right five. Okay, so that would look like That would look like negative 3 over 5. Up 3 into the left 5 would look like up 3 into the left 5. Negative 3 fifths, negative 3 over 5, 3 over negative 5. What's a negative divided by a positive? Positive. What's uh, negative, sorry. Negative. What's positive divided by a negative? Positive. Negative. Still negative, right? Positive divided by negative, negative divided by positive. Uh, you pair up a positive and a negative, you multiply or divide them, you get a negative. So this is a negative 3 fifths slope. This is a negative 3 fifths slope. I call it negative slope. There's no way to get a positive, right? If I take both of these to be negative, it turns out I just have, again, a positive number, a positive slope. Okay. Positive slope is one where the up and to the right comes out to be positive. Up to the right or down to the left, either way, comes out to be a positive number. Positive slope. Okay. So we can count our slope off by going up and to the right. The up would be the numerator and the, to the right would be the denominator. So let's say I want to talk about this line. Okay, say it goes through zero, seven, and uh, we'll make it three, eleven. What's the slope of that line? How what's the pattern of going up? Seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're going eight, nine, ten, eleven. Up four. Up four. To the right three. To the right three. Four to the right three. From our experience, we know that this number is the number that we move to the right because this is the, the kinds of number that we're calling for x. Right? We're going to move to the right three, six, nine, four. We want multiples of three to go in front of x. Okay. Rise over run, we can call it rise over run. 
Uh, so this line has a slope of four thirds. Now that's really specific, right? So if I were to ask that question in polygraph, say, does your line have a slope of four thirds? What do you think about that kind of a question? What do you think about that kind of a question? Thought provoking. Thought. If you were to ask it in polygraph, it would be thought provoking. I would have to really do the math. Okay, you'd have to look at all the line. You have to look at your line and be like, I don't know, is that a slope of four thirds? What would you do if you were looking at your graph in that little window? Okay, what if this was your graph? Not. What would you say? What would be the answer to the question? Does it have a slope of four thirds? No. Why not? Because it's not a positive. Okay, this is a negative slope, so it automatically does not have a positive four thirds slope. Or, or we can ask how many like squares. Okay, like. That works if it's inside this little window, which it is. So yeah. it would. Top, right. How many squares are top and right? What if we change the window, though? What if, I, what if these all have different windows? Okay, let's just make it this one. Our original calibration. Well, all of these have the same window. They go from negative 5 to positive 5, and from negative 5 on the bottom. What if my, what if we changed the game okay. so that we had <coughs> the axes were up here, not right in the middle? Then that looks like a sheet of paper. Okay. Yeah. Not like true to the whole bed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying that. Okay. So I mean that that, that works, but if we want to get a more unified vocabulary, right? We want to start talking about things that all lines have, and no matter where we're looking on the line, like, this is always true for this line, right? So, uh, some good questions would be like, well, let's talk about some questions we might ask. Well, what questions could we ask about the slope of the line? Is it a positive or negative slope? Okay, is it a positive slope? Negative slope. What about these guys? Random slope. Random. Is it an undefined slope? Or undefined a slope? or a zero slope. How can a line have an undefined slope? It's not useful. The slope's not useful? Yeah. Is it parallel to the y? That makes it undefined? Undefined means the number you're trying to use does not compute. It doesn't make any sense, right? It can't be the zero in the y-axis. Zero in the y-axis. Have a zero in the denominator? Yeah. So which of these has a, has a zero in the denominator of a slope? One. Um, Why? Because it doesn't have a... I, uh, <laughs> Let's pick two points on the line. Let's say there and there. Okay, and let's do that rise over run. Okay. Up, right? We're gonna go up some amount. We go up, how much do we go up? We don't know. Let's say, I'll just say it's seven. Okay, we go up seven. All right, so we know our slope is a rise of seven over a run of, now, if you go up seven, now how far do I go over? Zero. Zero, I don't go over at all. What is this number seven divided by zero? Zero. Undefined, not zero. Zero is computable. Undefined. You go up seven, don't go over at all. Go over zero. Go to the right zero. Go to the left zero. Okay. Rise over run. The run is, when the run is zero, the denominator of this, of this fraction is zero. Okay, so undefined. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, how about this one? Let's pick this point and this point. Let's figure out what the slope of this line is. Someone tell me about the slope of this line. Zero, seven. 
Zero, seven. Right? Go up how much? Zero. They don't go up at all. It's flat. It's horizontal. Go up zero, go over. It doesn't really matter. Maybe it's seven. What's zero over seven? Zero divided by seven. Zero. What's zero over five? Zero over three. Zero. Zero divided by anything is zero, right? So this line has a what slope? Zero slope. And this line, since you go up seven or three, or it doesn't matter, over zero, you end up with this, it's what? Undefined. It's undefined because the, the actual number that describes the slope is not a number that computes. It does not make sense to math. Math does not know what to do with divide by zero. Okay? There's just no way to make sense of that in the current scope of mathematics. No mathematician on earth has any way to tell you what divide by zero means. Okay? So it's not defined. The number is not definable. But that's not useless information. If the slope is not definable, that means we have what kind of a line? What? Parallel? Aren't all lines parallel to something? Something. Other than another line, it's at the same slope? How would you describe this line, though? Straight. Aren't all lines straight? You have a swirly line? Are any of the ones that we were playing with one of those swirly lines? No. A line by definition is a linear line. Line is straight. We can have, if we have a swirly thing, we would call it a curve. Not a line. We could call a line a straight curve. We can't call a curve like a curvy line. Because lines by definition are straight. So, how would you describe this line? Straight is, uh, well, too general. All lines are straight. What would you say about this line that has an undefined slope? Parallel to the y-axis. Okay, parallel to the y-axis. I'm thinking of a word such as v. Vertical. Vertical on this one? Across. Horizontal. Horizontal. Across. Because more mathematical word be horizontal. Okay. So. 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 What kind of questions can we ask if this is my line? What kind of questions could I ask about this? About this set of lines that might help us narrow it down. Now that we have a more specific. Does it have a positive or negative slope, right? What's kind of the ones, let's say I say, is it a positive slope, does it have a positive slope, and you say, no, it doesn't have a positive slope. Probably not. Okay, so what can I eliminate? All the positive. It doesn't have a positive slope, so uh, this one has a positive slope, that's out. Does this have a positive slope? No, so you leave that in. As a horizontal slope. Okay, so it doesn't have a positive slope, so that one's out. This one doesn't have a, let's see, that's positive. Mark it off, positive, mark it off. That's positive, mark that out of there. We're getting rid of a lot of these lines. Right? About half of them. Right? So now we know it has a negative or a zero or an undefined slope. Right? Okay. Uh, so we know it doesn't have a positive slope. Then what can we ask then? Is it a vertical slope. Is it vertical? Okay, well, if they say yes, then we know exactly where it is. Uh, oh, no, we know there's two vertical lines. Oh, hey, this is me. If they say yes, <laughs> then we know it's one of the two. If they say no, then we know we can eliminate those two. That's pretty good. See where we get it. Like, I heard Branson say, I don't know how to ask this. Right? Have trouble coming up with a question when we don't have that verbiage. Okay? So, let's Play another round, okay? Okay. And see if we can come up with some better questions. How do we know we have a bunch of good questions? How do we know at the end of the game that we had good questions? <sighs> at the end of the game, how will you know that you have you have asked good questions? Okay. If I look at two games, how would I judge like this person asked better questions than this person? I'm so happy to see that box. What's that? That's the tablet. Yeah. Right. Should try it out. Good day. Uh, yeah, right. I will. First class. So, how Let's about? <laughs> Let's look at. Let's look at two games. Of this game and this game, which would you say? How about maybe not that one? 
Well, yeah. Out yeah. of this one and this one, which would you say went better? Ours. Huh? Noah and Dustin's? Yep. Or Cameron and Mr. Stewart's? Yeah. How about between these two? Stewart's. And they're both mine. They're both mine. Which one? Cameron. The one with Cameron, why? A cop. His vocabulary? More. I don't know, I said up and to the left. Is that really. No. That's not really the vocabulary we're talking about. Narrow it down. Narrow it down a little faster? Like, fewer questions required. So let's see if we can get a, a, a game where the number of questions that we need to ask is not very many questions. 